Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, everybody. My name's Sandy, and I'm an alcoholic. It's very hard to tell you how happy I am to be here. I've missed all of you, all my fellow speakers and friends, and uh, it was quite a trip, <laughs> but it worked, and I'm just real happy to be here. I think um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, the spiritual path that ended up revealing itself to me as a result of the steps. And um, I look back and I realize that between years 38 and 41, I had more spiritual growth than any other period, which I think is kind of strange. <laughs> but it um, it was very exciting because things were appearing like answers or solutions or visions of things were appearing that I had been looking for for a long time. I've been, uh, I'm a, if you're new, join the Seekers Club. <laughs> Become a seeker. God couldn't would if he were thought. It's, it's seeking is making a statement to yourself that you want to see how far you can go in the spiritual world. And why not? Why miss out on that? And so, I've always liked that word. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about this stuff, but this is what comes into my mind. If you do um, any amount of reading... And, of course, both of our 11th step in the 12 and 12 in the big book suggest that we get lots of outside literature, mostly non-conference approved, because that's that's the best. (laughs) And... um, it's all to assist us on the sp- with the spiritual path that we're on in AA. It's not to have us leave AA and try something else. It's it's to and um, uh, you know the big book in the twelve twelve talk about it. our libraries are filled with this, and we have many spiritual teachers we could go to, and we have all these things. And I would coordinate it with your sponsor, but it is something that is an individual adventure. When you get to um, seeking and 11th step or whatever you want to call it, this is a decision that you're going to make on your own. And I'm trying to encourage you to make it and see what happens and, and just shoot for as much awakening as you can achieve in this lifetime. Anyway, it's, if, if you read many books, you find out that one of the only things that you can know for sure is that you are. That's one thing you know. I am. And there's just no disputing that. Now, whether you are, I don't really know, because I'm not you, so (laughs) I can't be so presumptuous as to assume that you are. 
But the trick of uh, the riddle is to finish the sentence, I am what? And uh, that is uh, quite a puzzle. And I think it was, I knew that any time you added a word to that level of um, seeking, the way you knew that it was true was the impact that it had on you. This is a, what is said about the truth a lot. And how long it lasts. And so we know we have things in AA that hit us really hard. And 20 years later, they still hit you hard. You know you're probably on to something. And I think it was in that 38th year, <laughs> I had gotten no word. Every word I tried, it wouldn't add. It would not last. wouldn't stay there. And the word that came along was eternal. And when that hit me as a true fact about myself, that I'm eternal, it was, um, it was just so exciting. I mean, to, to, to realize that that's, um, our true nature. There's something, uh, very revealing about that. It made me see that we have been part of this whole universe since it started. And to me, that's, I don't know why, but that's really exciting. It is just amazing. And I think I've talked about before that um, one way of looking at the universe is that it started, whatever it is, 17 billion years ago, or I'm not sure. <laughs> or that the Big Bang is still happening. I like that better. <laughs> and I've also liked to think about the fact that AA could have a Big Bang. And I've talked about this before. The moment when something that has never happened before happens and it changes things forever. And if you talk to AA old timers, there's probably three um, events that would be classified as the thing that started AA. And probably one third of the room here would vote for Bill being in the lobby of the Mayflower and deciding that he better find another alcoholic. And another one may be when Abby came to see Bill and Bill could not understand how Abby could look like he did wasn't anything that Ebby said. It was the fact that Ebby had been transformed into something that Bill didn't understand, but he wanted it. He didn't care about religion. He was, uh, that was all that. And, and so there was this moment when Bill's mind was opened to the idea, because he had nothing to do with religion. He wasn't a church person or anything like that even though Lois's father was a minister. And the third one, and it's the one that I chose, is Bill's hot flash in the town's hospital. His, that's what he called it later on, his hot flash. And he said a prayer that started AA. Now, I've always been fascinated with that prayer. I don't think you'll find this prayer in any church. Because it starts with, if there is a God. No, that's a, that would have to be a church that's just getting started. If you, if, if you know what I mean. 
If there is a God, I mean, what the hell is that? <laughs> That's the prayer of a very desperate person who's trying to change his mind and doesn't really know how. So he says, what's, what's real? You know, Ebby, whatever that thing Ebby is, if there is something like that, please show himself to me. And in the next instant, we had a transformation of a human being where he never was to drink again. And at the same time, it was put inside of him the pure energy to go out and save every drunk in the world. That's a powerful thing. And it turned out to have that much power because Bill went on and devoted the rest of his life to fulfilling the energies in that transformation. When we study and look at what he went through in the early years of AA, living in 60 different homes and people loaning him cars and Lois joining in with him and all these things, all out of an, a singular moment, just boom. Up until that moment, there was no hope for any alcoholics anywhere. Well, the Peabody movement and it was helping a little bit, but it, there really was nowhere that you and I were going to go. We were going to end up in an insane asylum or suicide or somebody killing us, but it was not going to be a happy ending like there is now. And so we could say that that uh, moment in AA, where are we now? We're almost at 80. How many years are we old? 75. 75. Yes, that's right, next year in Atlanta. That we could say that that Big Bang is 75 years old, or we could say it's still happening. I don't know why I like the idea that it's still happening. It's it's just rushing along, sweeping in new alcoholics and offering them the same transformation that Bill had. And it, I don't know why I find that very exciting, that it's still happening. That when you have that experience, it's the same one that Bill had. And it's the same energy. And it, it just gives me a, a great feeling that um, there's something very divine about the order of Alcoholics Anonymous. We've had a little history meeting in Tampa for a couple of years. And history will really reinforce your spiritual program. As you become aware of how this whole thing evolved, mostly um, in absolute opposition to what the Bill's ideas were. Oh, we need a lot of money. I'm sorry, but money will spoil it. Okay, well, then we won't get money. <laughs> We need a chain of hospitals. No, we're not going to get a chain of hospitals. Well, we need paid missionaries to go out. No, we're not going to get that. You, you, every idea he had uh, just seemed to get blocked through divine blockage. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. <laughs> And so I think his experience, that moment, really is eternal. And that's why I like that that, that is part of this. It has the energy to last forever if it's preserved. And you and I are the ones that have to preserve it. And to preserve it, we have to 
experience it. We don't, there's nothing to learn. There's just the willingness to go through the experiences that are set in front of us and offer no resistance to that. Bill once called AA a utter simplicity encased in a complete mystery. And when you look at this four words that I think capture all of Alcoholics Anonymous, let go and let God. You see, letting go is an utter simplicity. Okay, you just let go. But when you let God, you're dealing with a complete mystery. There's there's no explaining that. It is a wonderful expression to let go and let God. Letting go doesn't look like a big action verb. When you say that this is a program of action, you hardly think of letting go as, yeah, I'm going to be out there letting go all day. (laughs) You think, well, I'm on a 12-step call, I'm going to be doing this, and those are easy. Letting go is not easy. Letting go is resisted mightily by the part of us that wants to create its own story. And, of course, uh, story is a funny word. I, mean, I think I gave a talk on it one time. And you start looking, it's, what is your life? And until you get here, it's your story. Story? Where are the facts? No, there's no facts. It's just a story. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... You, you follow what I'm saying? It's just a story. But where'd the story come from? I made it up. <laughs> where the hell do you think it came from? It's my view of things, which um, needs to be slowly destroyed page by page (laughs) so that the truth can be revealed. (laughs) So we get our big book and uh, what does it say? You open the damn thing up, it says the story of... A hundred alcoholics. And then we go right off the bat, we got Bill's story. (laughs) In the back of the book are 29 stories or however many we had. So what is it about these stories? Well, when somebody tells their story and someone else is listening, something happens. And we call it attraction. Twelve-step calls were sharing our story, our experience, strength, and hope. We didn't say to the person, Hi, I'm here to help you. Tell me about yourself. Which was been happening to alcoholics throughout eternity. Well, sit down and tell me about yourself. And they're taking notes and they're going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when they comment, we know they haven't got a clue about what <laughs> anything that we're doing. So we don't listen to them. But the alcoholic comes and says, I'm, sit down. I think I'm like you. I'm going to tell you about myself and see if you relate. And then the person starts talking. And it was just like Dr. Bob said, oh, my God, this man knows how I feel. This man is one of me. And we connect at a very deep level and are willing to join forces. And we listen to each other. 
And we do what, what Joe was saying, where you get someone else to make decisions about your life. My sponsor told me we could get a gorilla from the zoo throwing darts <laughs> at a dartboard that said yes and no. <laughs> Should Sandy do this? Yes. <laughs> and we would get better results than if I thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> and came up with an answer. And, of course, in def defending myself, I thought I knew more about myself than anyone else. I'm inside of me, so I know the most. Turns out, on almost every count, I was wrong. Um isn't that something? <laughs> now, for me to understand that, Chuck Chamberlain comes into the picture very big. Um, I, I was really lucky to meet this man and to be invited out to California to Laguna Beach and sit in his, well, not sit in his chair, but sit near it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say I sat in it, but then that would have been a lie, and so I had to stop. <laughs> but I did stand near it. <laughs> and uh, Chuck would talk and talk, and the room would be sitting there gathered around. And you just had a feeling you were somewhere up in spirit land. And you knew everything he said was true, but you had no clue what he was talking about. <laughs> now, that may sound strange, but that's sometimes the way spirituality is. You just, you can't quite see how this could be true, but you knew that Chuck was a very important person. And, of course... He made, he reduced everything in AA to its utter simplicity, which is what Bill described AA. In your own lives, if you practice this, reducing things to simplicity, and I tell people that I sponsor, if you at a discussion meeting and you get through talking, Later on, think about what you said and see if you can say it in half the words and still cover everything. This is a, this is simplicity. This is getting rid of things that aren't necessary. And it's a great exercise in becoming spiritual, reducing things to their simplest form. When Chuck came out with that statement, I, 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 I've been thinking about it for all these years. There's no way to reduce it any further. He just got it all the way to the end. And what he said was that the Uh, let me make sure I don't screw this up. <laughs> See how hard simplicity is? <laughs> there is only one problem that includes all problems. And that problem is conscious separation from others and from God. And there's only one solution that includes all solutions. And that solution is conscious contact with God. So the solution to everything is conscious contact. The solution to everything. 
and all problems are conscious separation. And he goes on to draw the diagram that just everybody knows it if they've uh, read the book and seen it in there. But he draws a circle and he says, in this circle is everything. This is the entire universe. This is God. This is the entire universe. Everything there is, is in this circle. And just outside the circle is the alcoholic who thinks he exists in addition to everything. Now, this is a tricky thing to do. (laughs) You're going to exist in addition to everything there is? For alcoholics, it's simple. You just make up a story that you exist in addition to everything, and then you believe it. So, God has his universe, I got my universe. He's in charge over there, I'm in charge over here. Sounds fair to me. (laughs) Who was in charge of your universe? You were, right? You were in charge of everything. You decided, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not going to work today. That's it. (laughs) We don't work in my universe. (laughs) And so... Gets lonely over there. And we wonder why. And other people seem happier. And people are telling us, all your ideas are wrong. And we don't like to be wrong. But the only way to get out of there is to admit we're wrong and come back home to our real world. Now, the wonderful thing about the disease of alcoholism is it makes a person desperate enough that they might give up at least a part of their universe. I was willing to give up Rhode Island. I'm not picking on Rhode Island, but I i didn't want to rush into it, you know. But eventually we realized that, as Joe was talking about, we're going to have to make some huge changes or it's all over. This is why... AA is so successful compared to churches and other spiritual activities. We cornered the market on desperation. (laughs) In other words, people don't come here on a roll (laughs) trying to get their resume improved or something like that. They're they're, they really, you gotta be feeling bad to come into an AA meeting. Anyway, because of this desperation, pride, the human ego, what do you want to call it, is willing to surrender and in that surrender is when all everything happens. That's it. The surrender is uh, your big bang. And so we want to make it as deep as we can. And that's why sponsors and Dr. 
Silkworth, I mean, how brilliant that was. He said, Bill, tell the person the desperate nature of the disease and then move on to the other parts of this. Tell them the desperate nature. And so one of the jobs of a sponsor is to show the person that it's 100% worse than he thought it was. <laughs> oh, no, it's way worse than that. It's way worse, way worse. Because the more desperate, the more deep-level surrender can take place. And, of course, that is the foundation of everything else. It's the 100% surrender to the fact that I'm an alcoholic. And then later on, we try to achieve the same level of surrender on the other aspects of our human nature. And I had the same sponsor for 42 years, and we became very close. We were both Marines. And um, he came home one night to tell me very privately that pride was a character defect. And I looked at him and I said, Bill, does the rest of the Marine Corps know you're talking like this, that the, uh, pride is a character defect? Because the motto of the Marine Corps is the few, the proud. And if we have pride has to go, our motto will be the few, <laughs> which seemed communist or something. <laughs> so it's a tough struggle to realize that pride has no value whatsoever except to accomplish things without God. Then it can get a lot of work done. Yeah, take my pride and I'll go out and get a lot of stuff done and I'll take all the credit for it, which is the way it should be. <laughs> um, so getting back to I am eternal. The, uh, it, the whole thing is just so comfortable. And when I got sick and was in the hospital and saw the actions of other people who were totally disrupting their lives, to be there. I mean, I'm, they were just going out of their way. I mean, Christine, I'd look up and there she'd be like a nurse angel or something. And I knew that it was inconveniencing. She had to work and she had to do all these things. And there's, and I saw the fourth word in that equation. And it was love. And so it came out that I am eternal love. Who would have guessed that that's your fundamental nature? Because it doesn't get a chance to be exposed. It, there isn't the opportunities for it to be revealed that that's what 100% of your energy is. And you've made up a story that you're a piece of crap. What a shame, huh? And it's a, it's a very great struggle. The uh, I saw a kid in the club that I go to, and uh, he, he finally got something like eight months. And his mother came down with... Alzheimer's or something, and he decided to take care of her. And he was transformed. I mean, you could hardly 
realize this guy. He just looked so different. Now, granted, it lasted about three quarters of a year, but to, to go to that level of supplying pure love is, in today's world, is quite an accomplishment. And he went back out, but he's back. But even he saw something in himself that he couldn't believe. That he was able to do that, even for nine months, was remarkable. And I watched him, and it just became more and more apparent that this is the energy that you and I are built on. And the object of seeking and of um, continuing our growth in AA is to have the privilege of moving into that energy and living there. Now, it looks extreme. Mother Teresa looks extreme. And the people who are taking care of their mothers or fathers, you realize this is like a total commitment to someone else. But that is what we were born to do. And to to get there is uh, something that few are going to experience unless they try for it. And so it's hard to imagine that that would be a goal because like you I like to have fun you know what about this we'll talk about that in step 6 and 7 which they take a look at this idea and they go are you kidding (laughs) that's certainly not why we're here and uh, we'll come up with many arguments against such a conclusion I'm sitting up here and when I heard that song to Clancy and it started out with love I, I, that's all I see in Clancy I know he doesn't like me saying this he wants to, <laughs> he wants to be mean and this and that it's just like this eternal well of love just has been amongst us all these years and I didn't see it until recently I didn't see what it really was it's beautiful but it's very difficult it's not not easy well that's enough of that You know, the the human part goes, are you through yet? <laughs> Let's come back to the real world. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that are new, you're very lucky to have someone talk you into coming to a conference. There are many people in AA who scorn conferences. There's parts of the country where they never have them. And um, it's a shame. Because there's definitely different types of people who have different gifts. And these gifts were meant to be shared. And, you know, some of us are good at explaining things. Early on, when Clancy would do the invisible boat, all of a sudden I understood something that I could not have understood without that story. And so there's this ability to see stories as ways of explaining a mystery. Because God and the spiritual world is a mystery. 
And the only way it's ever been talked about is through fables and stories and myths and things like that. And when it's, when these are told, they have an effect on us that makes us feel the presence of something bigger than us. And this is a wonderful feeling. If you're new, you, no one's going to explain an AA God. We don't have an explanation. We just use the word. Because it's been around for thousands and thousands of years and it's had all kinds of meanings. But we all know what it means, something bigger than us. No specific explanation. And so what I urge you to do if you're new is to relax on that word. Don't let it overpower you. Don't let your own definition count you out. Maybe you had a childhood experience that was no good and... The nun whacked you on the head with a ruler or whatever it was. Because the only thing God is in AA is an experience that occurs to you. That's it. That's the end of our definition. We say to you, if you will follow your sponsor's guidance, something will happen to you that you won't be able to explain in human terms. And now you will have experienced your own creator's presence, which we read tonight, in your own life. That is your God. You were contacted by something. It's up to you to explain it to yourself. I refused to say the word God for five years. I said higher power. No, no, my higher power. Not not that Catholic God. It's a higher power, higher power, higher power, higher power. And then I realized you could say God faster than higher power. (laughs) And who the hell cared anyway? Was somebody... Did somebody keep track of me for five years? And then I said, God, and they said, I knew you were going to say that. I mean, <laughs> you chickened out and you said the word. <clears throat> so as you can see, AA is a program of action, not thinking, that is designed to produce one result. Conscious contact, right in our 12th step. Having had a spiritual awakening, I'm sorry, which is conscious contact. What we do with this is up to each individual. And the best thoughts that I've had over these years is to become a seeker. I don't know why that has stuck with me all these years. How far can I go spiritually? Because the farther I go, the more useful I'm going to be. I will not be able to stop myself from being useful. The force will be too strong. And as many people in this room know what I'm talking about. Part of them wants to say, well, I'll just stay home and have some fun doing this. And the other part says, no, get on that plane. No, go down that club. No, go down there. It's almost like our choice was taken away in the most beautiful way. I think that um, God put a longing for him inside of us. And there's nothing we can do about it. And it's going to torture us until we figure out what the heck it is. 
And then when we do, and we become in harmony with this, we will have solved one of the great riddles that human beings have to try and figure out. What the hell are we doing here? You know, I mean, I like the idea of just blowing up the planet and, <laughs> you know, stupid things like that. But we're, we're just blessed with spiritual unrest. It's hard to think of that as a blessing. God, I can never get comfortable. I can never be at peace. I can never be here. Yeah, well, keep trying. Keep seeking. So if you knew, we're all on your team. Um, this may have sounded like some bizarre commercial for <laughs> outer space. <laughs> But that's my world, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.